America's sixth largest city, San Diego, is a major commercial business center with more than two and a half million residents. The San Diego Bay is a bustling 22 square mile gateway to the Pacific Ocean. San Diego is famous for its perfect year-round weather and what locals would claim as coastal beauty unmatched in North America. It is a place where residents and tourists alike enjoy sailing, surfing, and watching birds and wildlife. Any given day finds thousands of people boating, diving, and fishing. The bay is home to dozens of marinas, yacht clubs, and boat repair yards, many of which are located at the north end of the bay, around Harbor Island and Shelter Island. In San Diego Bay alone, there's over 8,000 recreational boats in a couple of dozen different marinas lining all parts of San Diego Bay all the way to the most southerly end. Boating is a very important part of our culture. It's an important part of our recreation. But all those boats in one bay create what is, for most of us, an unexpected pollution problem. Recreational boating is an $11 billion business in the state of California. But that economic boon, or is it a direct competition with the environment? And news reporter Kim Edwards shows us an unprecedented effort to save San Diego Bay. Employees at Driscoll Boat Works wear protective suits and masks when they clean boat holes. The paint they're removing is toxic, and Driscoll's takes pains to protect, investing in equipment that keeps as many toxins as possible away from their employees and the bay. These paints are designed to kill marine life. That's why you put them on your boat. We need to move away from that, and you can still have fun, you can still have your boat, but we're focusing on a structural solution that's not a chemical or a toxic solution. But even with all the changes that the boat yards and the paint manufacturers have made, significant portions of our bay, including the Shelter Island Basin, are considered impaired water bodies. Many boats with toxic coatings on their hulls spend a lot of time in crowded marinas where each contributes a little pollution that can add up to serious problems for marine life. Anti-fouling paints are a commonly applied to boat hulls to prevent marine fouling. Marine fouling is the attachment of aquatic organisms such as barnacles and algae to a boat's hull. When organisms attach to the boat hull, it reduces maneuverability, increases drag and corrosion, and uh, decreases fuel efficiency. The problem of, of keeping growth off of boats is uh, <laughs> it's gone on as long as people have had, uh, had things in the water, so it's a centuries old problem. Captain Cook used copper sheet on the bottom of his uh, vessels of exploration, and of course so many boats solve the whole problem by never leaving the boat in the water in the first place. And some of them have, uh, they have these uh, lifts that, where you can lift a boat out of the water. Bottom paints with cuprous oxide emit small amounts of copper to slow the fouling growth on boat bottoms. How much copper is released through such passive leaching depends on the type of paint, its age, thickness, and copper content. Copper occurs naturally and is essential to most plants and animals. However, when dissolved copper exceeds the legal standard of 3.1 parts per billion, it becomes toxic to marine life, such as mussels, oysters, scallops, and sea urchins. In the enclosed yacht basins, dissolved copper has been measured as high as 12 parts per billion in San Diego Bay, and 29 parts per billion in Newport Bay. Our concern, of course, is that that copper will eventually settle out into the sediments and the cost of cleaning up the sediments will be very, very high. According to the California Regional Water Quality Control Board, San Diego region, every year more than 2,100 kilograms, or about two and a half tons of copper, flow into Shelter Island Yacht Basin in San Diego Bay. 93% comes from passive leaching by anti-fouling paints, and about 5% is from underwater hole cleaning. Runoff from water pipes, factories, automobiles, and other sources account for only 2%. Underwater hole cleaning is done by trained divers. 
hired to clean away fouling growth before it hardens. How they do their job plays a role in minimizing the amount of copper that is released when they clean boat bottoms. I am the president of the California Professional Divers Association and our main goal is to offer best management practices, training and certification for hull cleaning divers so that our hull cleaning industry as a whole can be in compliance with the California non-point source pollution control program. San Diego is not the only body of water with this problem. Many other Southern California boating centers have high levels of dissolved copper. Determination of total maximum daily loads, or TMDLs, is underway in Shelter Island Yacht Basin of San Diego Bay, in Newport Bay, and in Marina del Rey, where boat bottom paints are the main source of dissolved copper. Regulators have also found copper pollution in other parts of San Diego Bay and in the harbors at Oceanside, Dana Point, Santa Barbara, and Morro Bay. In Europe, environmental groups, boat owners, governments, and industries are also concerned about copper pollution. The European Union is regulating anti-fouling paints. On the east coast of Sweden, in the Baltic Sea, it's absolutely forbidden to use copper-based paint. Also Denmark and Holland have taken decisions to ban copper-based paint. For several years, the World Wildlife Fund and the German government have been testing non-toxic bottom paints on commercial vessels. Back in 1997, we started the project to test biocide-free anti-fouling paints on coastal vessels, which included fishing vessels, harbor ferries and coast guards, big commercial worldwide trading vessels, including container vessels, cruise liners, cargoes and a tanker. We looked for different speeds, different uh, activities and different operational profiles. There are about 16 paint manufacturers involved, but because we have this project running for five years already, we have the possibility to look of a long-term performance of some of these paints. This is a worldwide problem, and one that is actively being addressed. Besides Sweden, the Netherlands and Denmark, Finland, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom are monitoring dissolved copper. Here in the U.S., the Federal Clean Water Act requires the local Regional Water Quality Control Board to protect surface waters by regulating pollution. The Regional Board is conducting a Total Maximum Daily Load, or TMDL, in the Shelter Island Yacht Basin for dissolved copper. We will determine how much copper can enter the environment and still meet water quality standards. Then the next part is the implementation process, and this is where we figure out how are we really going to meet these water quality standards. Well, there are a number of different ways to reduce um, dissolved copper loading to Shelter Island Yacht Basin and the Bay. They range from decreasing the number of boats um, to decreasing or eliminating copper-based anti-fouling paints that are applied to the boat hulls. Well, I, I am in favor of using non-toxic coating. Uh, the apps, the uh, reason for using toxic coatings is to kill critters, and the less we do of that, I think the better off we'll be. There is great interest in the environmental communities and the boating communities in working together to solve the problem of elevated copper concentrations in our bay so that we can recreate in a manner that is protective of the environment. We represent uh, seven boat yards, three shipyards, and 19 marinas on San Diego Bay. One of the goals of our tenants is to keep the bay clean. It's in our interest to keep it clean because that's what makes our businesses profitable. So there's a bottom line to planning this as well as a moral responsibility to do so. The vision of the diving community, and I believe the community at uh, large in the marine industry is to come together and find a solution so that we could offer the um, boat owner an alternative uh, to move away from toxic chemicals that might be polluting our bay. The handwriting is basically on the wall as far as anti-fouling paints are concerned. So we're looking at viable alternatives to the conventional use of either copper or tin-based paints. 
The ultimate solution to our problem was coming up with alternative boat hull paints. And if we were going to be a responsible party in that arrangement, the port believed that we needed to be the first ones to really repaint our boats with non-toxic paints. We operate 11 different um, craft in San Diego Bay, and we have now repainted each of those boats with non-toxic boat hull paints. With major funding from the California State Water Resources Control Board, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and other sources, the Sea Grant Extension Program of the University of California's Cooperative Extension has been conducting a field demonstration of non-toxic bottom paints. We're cooperating with San Diego marine businesses and boat owners, with regulators and environmental groups, and also with paint companies, boat yards, and underwater hull cleaners who have experience with non-toxic bottom paints. We thought we would try some of these new products and, and uh, see if we could help. We've done approximately 75 boats in the last 15 years with non-toxic products in, in, the, uh, in the material. In this study, the University of California Sea Ground Extension Program is tracking the performance of three non-toxic boat bottom paints on six boats in San Diego Bay. Ceramcoat 54, Aquaply M, and Miracle Cover Marine were selected because local boat repair and maintenance companies have had positive experiences with them. Ceram Code 54 is a ceramic particle loaded two-part epoxy. When I say ceramic particles, I'm referring to submicron ceramic particles. They come in two shapes, platelets and spheres. The lubricity is similar to that of Teflon. Ceram Coat uh, can be scrubbed uh, and scraped. The product Aquaply M is 100% solids epoxies, meaning it has no solvents, not even water, and therefore has no VOCs, volatile organic compounds, which pollute the air. It provides a hard, very slippery surface so that it's easily cleaned in the water and nothing toxic is released. Aquaply M is really designed to be a permanent bottom coating. So far we have test boats that have been in the water for 10 years. and. Uh, so we hope it'll last as long as the boat. Well, I'm an avid boater and have been all of my life. Uh, this is my sixth boat. It had 17 years of accumulated copper bottom paint on it. One of the interests that we have in applying the Aquaply M is to A, remove all of that accumulated uh, copper bottom paint and try a non-toxic bottom paint and at the same time contribute to the the educational uh, and research uh, project that's going on to see if this type of coating is effective for the general boating public. Bottom paint traditionally has been an 18 month to 24 month cycle before recoating, and it's expensive. Traditionally it's been expensive. So any way that we can extend the time um, that that material stays in the bottom without having to go back in the yard translates into savings for the boat owner. The University of California demonstration project also includes a silicone coating called Miracle Cover. Because they're easy to clean, silicone coatings are popular with boaters who like to race because they're so slippery. But the boat owner must tell the boat repair yard that the boat has a silicone bottom coating and needs special handling. Miracle Cover is a water silicone based coating. Um, Nothing will actually stick to it. The, the algae and the tube worms will lay on the surface, but they're easily removed with just a light cleaning. You cannot scrub on this bottom with any kind of, of hard abrasive or you're just going to tear the product up. Uh, the nice thing about it is, is it is clear, so uh, we're able to go with a, what, basically whatever color epoxy we can use as an undercoat on it uh, because it is clear. Um, I've had boats in the water for approximately two years now with this coating and although they've had to be touched up and so forth, they've, they've held up really well. Probably the most difficult part of all this, in my view, is going to be the implementation of the methodology to put these coatings on. Copper-based paint's pretty straightforward. Open can, put in roller, apply to hull. And these other coatings are not straightforward. I know that each product is going to require uh, a separate set of parameters, a separate set of training, in some cases separate uh, unique equipment. Uh, you also in the long run have to look at the cost of, if you will, retooling the yards to do this. 
Preparing to coat a boat's hull with traditional copper-based paints is straightforward. We haul the boat out of the water, we hydrowash it with a high pressure uh, wash down to remove uh, any scum on the bottom of the boat. Um, and then we wet sand it with uh, like a 60 grit sandpaper uh, to remove uh, any other growth that the hydro wash didn't take off and basically prep it for uh, a bottom paint. If there's any peely paint, we'll uh, sand that off with a, a vacuum sander that contains uh, dust from getting into the air. And then we'll uh, either spray or roll on um, uh, a bottom paint. So generally about three days for a bottom paint job. It takes a great deal more effort and expense to prepare a boat that already has copper-based paint to receive a new non-toxic paint. The boat is removed from the water, the hull dries, then the old paint is scraped off to help the new epoxies bond to the existing fiberglass. Unlike the old copper bottom boats of long ago and the copper based paints of today, the non-toxic coatings don't retard marine growth on boats. The trade-off for a more environmentally sound coating is the need for more frequent cleaning. Well, generally, because the non-toxic coatings have no antifoulant properties, what happens is that the animal and plant life can affix itself to the coating surface relatively easily. The first thing that happens, especially in the summertime, is that the uh, silting layer that accumulates on the boat becomes very thick. Then an animal growth, in this case in San Diego Bay, we have uh, South China Sea's coral worm. That calcium sulfite worm secretes an acid so that it can affix itself to the hull coating. It continues to try and penetrate. If that calcium sulfite tube worm is left on too long, it can actually damage the coating of the surface of the paint. In a biocide free model, if you left that tube worm on there past, say, three or four weeks, you would have to use extremely aggressive techniques to remove it. The diver needs to clean the hull more frequently to uh, preserve the performance of the boat on a non-toxic coating. Like the boatyards, underwater hull cleaners will have the expense of retooling for cleaning non-toxic paints. The biocide free paints require frequent cleaning and if it's uh, silicone, delicate cleaning. If it's ceramic or uh, epoxy, then it's, you, you treat it uh, with these more aggressive tools with more aggression. These are the brushes that are going to get the job done. It's got a thicker bristle, it's got carbide uh, particles impregnated into the nylon, and it's what it takes to deal with uh, biocide free paint. The conventional bottom paints, the copper model, has to be cleaned every three to four weeks depending on the season. In a non-copper or a biocide free coating, these coatings have to be cleaned much more frequently, every 10 to 14 days. Cost is a major factor in the decision to use non-toxic bottom paints. In 2002, with major funding by the California Department of Boating and Waterways and other sources, the University of California Sea Grant Extension Program and the UC San Diego Department of Economics surveyed over 200 boat owners, boat yards, underwater hull cleaners, and paint companies about cost comparisons for copper-based and non-toxic bottom paints. In the study that I'm currently doing now, looking at the economic incentives with respect to the bottom paints uh, that people are putting on their boats, we'll look at what the, the economic factors are that drive people to adopt particular paints and what type of incentives it would take to get people to switch from the traditional high copper paints to something that's less harmful to the environment. The economic study found that stripping off old paint is expensive. So new boats and boats that need to have old paint stripped anyway are the best choices for a non-toxic coating. Non-toxic bottom paints must be cleaned twice as often as copper-based paints. On the other hand, a durable non-toxic paint may last several years compared to two to three years for a copper-based paint in San Diego and even less time in warmer waters. So, over the short term, copper-based paints could have a cost advantage, but non-toxic paints could have the advantage over the entire lifespan of a boat. The cost to buy and apply the paint and how the boat is used are also important. 
The economic study found that boats need to be stripped after 8 to 20 years, depending on how well they are maintained, and that 15 years is about average. So requiring all new boats to have non-toxic paint and phasing out copper paints over 15 years could reduce the costs for boat owners to transition to non-toxic bottom paints. This on average 15 year timetable would allow them to convert when their old copper based paints were ready to be stripped and replaced anyway. If the government announced a future ban, it would raise the value of boats already using non-toxic bottom paints and create an incentive for others to use them. As an economist doing this study, all we can really do is lay out what the options are and what the implications of those options are. The stakeholders are going to have to sort of argue and debate these issues amongst themselves and ultimately come to a solution that everyone can live with. Presently the cost of initial application of cleaning down the boat and, and applying this coating is, is for our club, our little club, is prohibitive, but uh, if it were applied on a new boat before the stripping and, and preparation was necessary, uh, then we would just be interested in doing it on the rest of the boats. We, after all, would just as soon <laughs> help with the, with the uh, problem of pollution in the, in the bays uh, if we can. Advances in the product later that, that, that I hope will come uh, will also interest people. Cost calculations for boats outside the San Diego area should consider local cleaning, paint replacement, and stripping intervals when determining the expense of transitioning to non-toxic paints. A key component of the UC Sea Grant Extension Program is to inform the public on these issues. It's important that we educate the boat owners and others in the marine industry of not only the problems with the toxic paints, but also the alternatives. The boating community is more aware than they were five years ago about the, uh, the environmental impact of the, uh, the toxic cupress oxide bottom paints, mainly because of the efforts of the Sea Grant program in, in publicizing this to the public, as well as articles that have appeared in the various boating magazines and, and newspapers and, and so forth. Uh, but the vast majority of the public is still not up to speed on that, so it's going to take an education process. The University of California Sea Grant Extension Program held field days in the fall of 2002 and again in 2003 for the public to see demonstration project boats and talk with their owners, painters, and hull cleaners. Today we're presenting an overview of our project to the boating community of San Diego. We have representatives from underwater hull cleaning companies, from boat yards, and from Sea Grant here to speak to the boating community about non-toxic bottom paints. The field day provides them an opportunity to view an underwater hull cleaning demonstration and also to speak to those who have experience with non-toxic bottom paints. Within the boating community, word of mouth is very powerful. Boaters seek advice from boat yards, underwater hull cleaners, and marina managers who can serve an important role in educating boaters on non-toxic anti-fouling strategies. I recently went into a major boating supply store and I didn't see any non-toxic anti-fouling paints available on the shelves nor any information about them. What this really means is that there is a big role or big opportunity for public education and outreach about these non-toxic anti-foulings that are available. Marina managers can help reduce copper pollution in San Diego Bay through education, through informing their tenants, through sending out mailers, to just educating them in general. Like so many unproven products or somewhat proven products, there's a ton of them out there and there's a ton of claims and you have to sort through all this to figure out which works and which didn't work. As part of this, as head of the Port Tenants Association and a longtime boater, I felt as though it was my responsibility to take some lead in this and I came up with a two-part epoxy called Aquaply M. I have a sailboat and uh, figured it, I could put this on, keep my speeds up for racing, and, and do something for the environment. But it's not affected boat speed uh, negatively, and I, I'd like to think I'm going faster, but that may be a question of the skill of the person who's piloting the boat. I'm going into my sixth year with this on the bottom of the boat, and I, I'm breaking even on the paint, and I'm doing something good for the environment. In my opinion, what we should do to reduce copper pollution from bottom paints would be to 
continue to test and develop non-toxic coatings and eventually get all the boaters to use them. There's a number of different biocide-free coatings on the market. Um, we're all, you know, getting off the ground more or less, although we've been experimenting with them here at the boatyard for about 15 years. Uh, they're just really getting off the ground as far as public knowledge. San Diego is simply going to be a leader in trying to figure out what the solutions are because the copper problem essentially exists all over. The problem occurs anywhere you get a large enough concentration of recreational boats with copper hulls. Uh, what we hope is that what we learn here will be applied elsewhere in California, the United States, and perhaps internationally. So it's very exciting to really be on the, the front the cusp of this new way that's coming to California where we're going to focus on prevention of these impacts instead of dealing with the resulting problems once they're out there. Companies around the world are developing non-toxic coatings for recreational boats. As non-toxic paints become more widely used, the cost to buy and apply them is likely to drop. Independent testing and public education on cost-effective non-toxic products are critical to ensure clean boating waters. Healthy competition between manufacturers, savings from producing and marketing larger quantities, and growth in the capabilities of boatyards to work with them all play a part. We spend our, a lot of our recreational time in around uh, these waters, and the uh, environmental health of that water is important to us. Uh, and for that reason, we worry about whether the copper levels are too high and whether they do have an impact. The promotion of non-toxic um, bottom coatings is fully consistent with the new guidelines and policies on environmental justice and pollution prevention that have just been adopted by the Cali PA. These recommendations are going to really change how we look at pollution regulation and how we're going to address pollution problems in the future. I think non-toxic coatings have a role in the future of San Diego Bay because boaters in general want a clean environment for their boat. They enjoy coming down, they want clean water, they spend a great deal of money to maintain their boats, and they enjoy having their families come down. They want their children to fish off the back of their boats, they want to be able to eat the fish that they catch, and they do want clean water. Many non-toxic anti-fouling strategies are available and boat owners should talk to boat yards and hull cleaners about what works well in their local area. The University of California Sea Grant Extension Program will report their results on their website and in seminars to help boat owners and boating businesses make informed decisions about non-toxic anti-fouling strategies. For more information, contact the University of California Cooperative Extension Sea Grant Extension Program in San Diego County. Please visit them on the internet to learn about their publications and events.